This right here is Kepler telescope that's orbiting our planet right now looking for more exoplanets. On May 10 of 2016, um, this beautiful piece of machinery discovered even more exoplanets. Essentially something like 1,284 new exoplanets have actually been confirmed and discovered by this beautiful uh, satellite and this very powerful telescope. And this brings the total number of planets found to date to 3,264. Now today we're going to be using Eyes on Exoplanets Beta. This is a free app available directly from NASA and you can actually download it and play around with this for free. And today we're going to be talking about this amazing discovery. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now, first of all, let's actually talk briefly about uh, what Kepler Telescope's mission is and what exactly it's doing. So uh, in Eyes on Exoplanets, um, you can actually look at Kepler by going directly to, by clicking on this search button right here, choosing observatory and then looking for Kepler, which is, I believe, right here. So this is all of the stars that, um, on all of the exoplanets that have actually been discovered only by Kepler alone and you get to see everything that Kepler discovered by going here. So, And so I think this is a pretty good way of visualizing and trying to understand what Kepler's mission is. So it's orbiting our planet, and as it's orbiting our planet, it's basically looking into only one direction. And you can kind of see this direction with this sort of uh, shape thingy. And um, this is where it is in our galaxy. So it's not very, very far in terms of, you know, uh, the size of the galaxy, but it is um, pretty far in terms of the, uh, the distance from Earth. And the farthest planet um, or farthest exoplanet that it was able to find so far is about 8,800 light years away. Now, it's been doing this for over four years now. And over this period of time, it found something like 2,400 different exoplanets. And this so far has been the most productive telescope as well. What's interesting though, is that um, sometime in 2013, there was a very, very big problem with Kepler. And this is actually a pretty good view, uh, just showing you uh, the actual shape of the telescope lens as well. It's sort of a very interesting, uh, shape. It's not a square, it's not a circle, but it has these uh, really interesting uh, corners. Anyway, so um, in 2013, it actually uh, lost one of its um, stabilization wheels. And so uh, the scientists actually had to stop the mission. And uh, they thought that this was the end of Kepler, but the brilliant scientific mind was able to find a way to stabilize Kepler using something called solar pressure. So basically, this is a pressure produced by the sun. And because of this solar pressure, um, they were able to start a new mission that they called K2, continuing the search for um, various exoplanets in, uh, in the Milky Way. And Kepler is actually still scheduled to continue the search until around 2018, when it's finally going to run out of fuel and NASA will have to um, essentially scrap uh, the mission. Uh, but by then, we, we expected to find a few more uh, exoplanets, a few more stars, and it has already proven quite successful at doing that. So. Let's talk about some of the coolest findings that it had so far. And um, let's also take a look at what it looks like um, from Earth. So this is Earth and this is actually where Kepler is looking. And this is what it's basically been looking at for the for something like over four years now. And these are um, the stars that it actually discovered and exoplanets in this region as well. Um, now, uh, because it discovered so many exoplanets in this tiny region, imagine how many exoplanets there are in the rest of this beautiful galaxy Milky Way. So uh, this sort of gives us a pretty good idea. And one of the main discoveries so far is that um, out of all main sequence stars, basically stars that are very, very similar to our sun that you see in the background, 25% um, uh, of these stars had terrestrial planets in habitable zone. That's very, very good news, meaning that there are rocky planets, just like Earth, just like uh, Mercury, just like Venus and Mars, in the region of space where there might be liquid water. And something like 25% of these, all of these uh, main sequence stars have these, have these planets in this region, meaning that uh, the chance for habitable planets, the chance for planets that might even harbor life is suddenly very, very, very high. But unfortunately, out of uh, 1,284 planets that it's discovered uh, recently, basically on May 10th, um, when these findings were released, uh, not many of these planets were Earth-like, um, which is kind of interesting. So there seem to be a lot of very, uh, uh, very strange, very different planets out there. Not many like our Earth, though. 
And let's actually take a look at two of these uh, that are the most Earth-like that it's discovered. I'm going to go by name here. And um, by the way, this is probably the only app so far that you can find um, for free or I guess even the paid app that even has these discoveries um, listed and you can already explore them because uh, other simulations that I often use like Universe Sandbox or Space Engine, it will be years before they actually add all of these new discoveries. Anyway, so the first uh, um, planet we're going to go to is called Kepler-1638b. And so this is Kepler-1683b. For some unknown reason in ice on exoplanets, it's listed as a gas giant. However, uh, the paper I've been reading says otherwise. It says that this is just a very, very large Earth-like planet. Specifically, it's very likely to be 60% larger than Earth. But it's possible that it's also a gas giant. It's essentially a planet that's in the region of space where our Earth would be. Uh, and orbits a star that's very very sun-like. So basically, um, it's a it's a planet that has a quite high potential for um, habitability. But if it is a gas giant, it is going to be of no interest to us because obviously uh, we will not be able to survive on this type of a planet. But if you look at the habitable zone, it's right in the middle of the habitable zone, just like our planet Earth. So there is that as well. So if it is a gas giant, it's going to be a very comfortable gas giant to live on if you can survive the horrible pressure and the toxic gases in its atmosphere. And we can even compare this to our solar system just to see that it's kind of almost exactly the same. Look at the orbit of Earth and the orbit of Kepler 1638b. They're almost exactly the same. Pretty awesome. But in terms of distance from us, it is uh, relatively far away. It's actually... 2867 light years away from us so yeah there's that as well it's kind of far and it's possibly not even a terrestrial planet all right so that possibly is out let's look at the second one and the second planet is called kepler 1229b or kepler 1229b it's a very earth-like planet in terms of size in terms of mass um it's also possibly not very hot but the problem is that, uh, well, the problem is really not the planet, but the star. The star here, if we actually look at the planetary system, um, it's actually a red dwarf, uh, not exactly as powerful as our sun. And then if we look at the habitable zone, it seems to be outside of the habitable zone as well. If we compare this to our solar system, it does have a similar orbit, but because the sun is, uh, because its star is not as powerful, it might actually be a very cold planet. So for all we know, Kepler 1229b might actually be a very cold terrestrial planet. And uh, these two are actually the most uh, Earth-like planets found. The other other planets, other 1,200-something um, planets or over 1,000 planets that have been found are either gas giants or cold giants or super hot giants or basically some types of giants that are not habitable at all. Um, which is kind of interesting, but also, I guess, unfortunate, because the few terrestrial planets that we've been able to find, uh, they seem to be either outside of habitable zone or too close to the sun and inside the super, super hot zone where there's definitely not going to be any liquid water present. And so to date, uh, of all of the Kepler planets that Kepler has discovered, there's only one that's very, very Earth-like. And here we actually can measure this using a specific index called... Earth Similarity Index. I'm going to sh show you what this planet first. We're going to go by name again. And this planet has been actually found a few years ago. It's called Kepler-443b. Now, Kepler-443b is also listed as a hot Jupiter in this particular simulation. But um, today, we kind of are almost certain that this is very likely to be a very terrestrial pla planet. Um, as a matter of fact, its uh, Earth similarity is 0.84 or 84% as similar to Earth as Earth is. And so this Earth Similarity Index refers to the idea of measuring how similar um, planets are to Earth by taking things like mass, radius, surface temperature, and obviously location in the solar system, and a few other things as well into account, and then finding a number between zero, meaning that very, very different from Earth, and uh, one, which is basically almost exactly like Earth. And as you can see, Kepler-443b is right in the habitable zone, and this is one of the reasons why its habitability index is like 0.84. So if there is a Kepler discovery that's sort of Earth-like, it is probably this planet right here. Even though it's listed as a hot Jupiter, it's probably a terrestrial planet. 
And there's actually another planet that has been found by another telescope that has a very similar um, index, 0.84, and this planet is called GJ667C. And you can see this planet right here. It's actually part of another system. And uh, this is called a super Earth. Basically, it's a planet that's a little bit larger, possibly a lot larger than Earth. And um, it is a rocky planet. In this particular simulation, it seems to be a little bit hot, but it might be actually not as hot as, as it appears here. And um, this is another um, 0 0.84 index planet that is possibly habitable uh, to us in the future because it's right in the middle of habitable zone around the star code GJ667. But because this is not a Kepler's finding, we're not going to be talking about it just yet. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I just wanted to show you and explain to you what Kepler is and what it does and what it's found in uh, May of 2016 and why it's kind of important. And basically, um, by summer of 2018, it will hopefully find a few more, or I guess not a few more, but a lot more, hopefully several thousand more uh, exoplanets. And we'll hopefully find something that's a little bit more Earth-like that we can be hopeful about uh, of one day landing on and possibly even calling it our new home. But even all of the data that Kepler has gathered so far is still actually being actively analyzed. So you can expect um, in the few, next few months or so, even more exoplanets uh, to kind of appear in this da database because um, some of them actually have already been found, but they just haven't been um, confirmed yet or they ha the data hasn't actually been analyzed. So it will take some time before all of these observations have been officially analyzed and confirmed and those exoplanets have been identified and also named as well. And anyway, so that's all for this video and for Kepler mission and for the discovery of May 2016 and why it was so cool and so important. And so now this database has actually increased in size by something like 40% and we now have 3,264 planets. This actually updates almost regularly um, and um, if, you, if you have this app and it's free, so I, I don't see why you wouldn't have it, um, you will basically get this number increase almost every day because almost every day we find at least one new exoplanet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from uh, from Kepler and from this video as well. If you don't have eyes on exoplanets, uh, do get it because it's a pretty cool app and it's very realistic. It's made by NASA and it's updated by NASA and it's probably the most up-to-date uh, database of all exoplanets available to us. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next video, game you later, bye-bye. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to share it, don't forget to like it, and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. And once again, my apologies for my coarse voice. The cold that stayed with me for almost a week now doesn't want to leave me. I think it likes me too much. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.